verses for today are chapter 12, verses 35 to 44. As Jesus was teaching in the temple, he asked the question, how can the teachers of the law say that the Messiah will be the descendant of David? The Holy Spirit inspired David to say, the Lord said to my Lord, sit here on my right until I put your enemies under your feet. David himself called him Lord. So how can the Messiah be David's descendant? A large crowd was listening to Jesus gladly. As he taught them, he said, watch out for the teachers of the law who like to walk around in their long robes and be greeted with respect in the marketplace, who choose the reserved seats in the synagogues and the best places at feasts. They take advantage of widows and rob them of their homes and then make a show of saying long prayers. Their punishment will be all the worse. As Jesus sat near the temple treasury, he watched the people as they dropped in their money. Many rich men dropped in a lot of money. Then a poor widow came along and dropped in two little copper coins worth about a penny. He called his disciples together and said to them, I tell you that this poor widow put more in the offering box than all the others, for the others put in what they had to spare of their riches, but she, poor as she is, put in all she had, she gave all she had to live on. Um, in the reflection today, I, I will be mainly talking about three points uh, that stood out to me most while reading this. Firstly, in verses 35 to 37, we see an instance where Jesus is explaining to the people that although he falls under the lineage of King David, he is in fact son of God. And he explains that by quoting David's words in Psalms chapter 109 verses 1, where David refers to the Messiah as Lord. And if a king called anyone Lord, that entity could only ever be God. And so in a, in a very simple X equals to Y manner, Christ explains that he, the Messiah, is not just son of man, but also son of God. It's important to remember that when we say Christ is man and God, we don't mean Christ is half man and half God. We mean Christ is full man and full God. Next, in verses 38 to 40, Christ admonishes the teachers of the law for seeking worldly glory. And I have two points to note here. At the beginning of the verse, Christ says, watch out for these people. And I think this is one of the many verses in the Bible that can be quoted in the modern world, a world where influencing people is quite literally a career. It's, it's a livelihood. It's a means of livelihood. And I think even in a, even in a non-religious, non-spiritual sense, we can pay heed to this by realizing that it's important we are conscious of who we listen to, who we follow, and who we allow to influence us. And secondly, Christ warns those who have forgotten that they, have, they are the servants of the Lord and have strayed away from to a path of seeking worldly attention. And although Christ refers here to teachers of the law, I think it can be very easily extrapolated to each and every one of us here today who have at some point in their life, had someone look up to them, could be a sibling, a friend, a child, someone follow what they're doing. And Christ, along with warning, along with the warning, is reminding us that we as teachers, in, in, in a broad sense, of course, must be humble servants of the Lord and must not be wound up in worldly desires so that the ones who come after us can also do and be the same. Finally, in verses 41 to 45, it is a tale of the poor widow who gave the Lord everything she had in offering. He makes a comparison to the rich men who in earthly value offered much more than the poor widow. But Christ says that she has in fact put more than what the rich men have. And to me, this is a very beautiful tale of unconditional love and unconditional understanding that we can only ever expect from God because he didn't care that she gave less than the other person. He simply saw her mind, her heart, heard her prayer, and that in itself was much more than anyone could ever offer in materialistic manner.
personally, I, I find it very reassuring and comforting to know that he can see through my thoughts and my feelings and my intentions without me having to physically explain it and love me simply for all I am able to do for him. It doesn't matter how much. Christ proves once again that God does not ask for riches or mighty offerings. He only asks for your honest love. And I'd like to end this reflection on a note so that everyone can remember, even when you find it difficult to understand yourselves, God understands you much more than you can imagine. And that's all for today. Thank you. Thank you.